Hello and welcome to another episode of Sadler's TV. A goalkeeping special for you this afternoon. Three pairs of the safest pair of hands uh, that we could find. It's uh, Neil Etheridge, Craig McGillivray and Liam Roberts, my three guests for today's show. Uh, we've got lots to get through. You moan about, well goalkeepers moan, cut the moans about uh, not getting enough promotion to where you are with your own show. Uh, Craig, if I can start with you first. Um, Tuesday's result, a chance to get back in the sticks and what did you make of it from a goalkeeping perspective? Yeah, uh, it was nice to be back out there for a start. Um, it was a scrappy game, uh, bobbly pitch, but we ground out the result and got a 2-1 win out of it. I mean, it was a game that, for the first half, there weren't much between the two sides. What did the, the gaffer say at half-time? Uh, he was just saying it's, it's going to be one of these sorts of games It's going to get to the point, it's that point in the season where it's the result that counts mainly. As long as you stay in the game, we know as a team we'll get chances and... We did, and we got the two goals. But he just said at halftime, just don't get frustrated with just having to put it in behind all the time. Could have done anything with the goal. It was a decent strike from the edge of the box, to be fair. It's obviously frustrating conceding because I wanted the clean sheet. And it wasn't yeah. far away from getting it, but yeah, it was. It was a, a half decent strike from there, lad. To be fair mm -hmm. to him. F, you obviously had to sit out. How's the knee? The, the cut that you sustained at Reading? It's uh, it's better. It's better than the first time I did it, mm -hmm. to be honest. And uh, you know, I hope to be back. You know, training in the. A few days, or start of next week, to be honest. Have you found out who the culprit is yet? Was it Tails? It was Tails. <laughs> it was Tails of his back studs, and um, it was painful, but it's, uh, it's part and parcel of doing the job, really. And it's, it's not the same cut as it was before? No, different cut, same knee, which is obviously frustrating. Um, it's definitely going to be a bruised and battered knee by the end of it, but it's, uh, you know, I said, it's part and parcel. Mm -hmm. um, Robert, you've enjoyed some, some loan spells out there as well. How did you find it? I know we were talking just before we came on about Gresley and how much you enjoyed your time there. Yeah, it's been brilliant for me. Obviously, that's my next step, trying to get some minutes and uh, hopefully play on the pitch. Um, yeah, it was good for game management. That's the one thing that I've been trying to work on the last couple of months. So it was good to get some minutes out there. What are the main differences when you go out to a non-league club and you're, you're in there, men's football? Is the rough and tumble OK to deal with? Yeah, you can, well, it's part and parcel of our game now as well. So obviously in our league, they're still big lads as well. So you have to... Exactly like you said, part and parcel of the game. Mm -hmm. Lots to get through. One of the early questions I want to ask all three of you really is about why, I'm going to go straight for the juggler here, <laughs> why most managers are reluctant to give praise to goalkeepers. Now it's a generalised question I know, not, <laughs> not aimed at our manager or previous <laughs> managers. Why do you think as goalkeepers, managers are so reluctant to praise in a goalkeeper? Um, I don't know. I think... Um, in past experiences, you know, goalkeepers are either loved or hated at the club. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a job that's not very flamboyant or pretty to look at. But, um, you know, for us, we enjoy it. We train day in, day out, extremely hard. And, um, you know, obviously we, we understand that strikers and the other players on the pitch will get more praise than we will. So, um, you know, I can't really answer that for <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How frustrating is it, Craig, when you hear a manager perhaps come out and say, well, goalkeepers are there to make saves? Uh, well, at the end of the day, that's that's the whole role of what we've got to do, keep the ball at the back of the net, but there's only so much you can do. If someone hits an unbelievable strike from 30-odd yards into the top corner, and there's only so much you can do to try and keep it out. Mm -hmm. Robbo, any frustrating experiences down the years? Not perhaps getting as much praise as you feel uh, you deserve? Maybe, but like we say, you know, we're, we're there to do that. But like mm -hmm. Craig said, if they put an unbelievable strike in, then you've got really no chance of you, really. So it's one of them. Um, what does it take to be a, a professional goalkeeper? You've all made it as, as pros now. If you had to highlight certain attributes to young people that might be watching this, young footballers who want to be in your shoes one day, what are the most important aspects of goalkeeping? Um, hard work is obvious, I think. Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's a given. Hard work uh, and learning, taking on different... Um, aspects of the game and um, you know you're not going to be the same as anyone else um, I've grown up playing uh, alongside some fantastic goalkeepers who have played in the World Cup and uh, I've been very privileged to do that um, but you can't you have to find over time your uh, your style of play mm. you know and I guess that's like other players as well same as a goalkeeper you know I think you know if you look at Hart is different to Neuer, Neuer is different to uh, Casillas in his time. So you need to find what you uh, what suits you as a goalkeeper. Mm. How about you, Craig? Uh, not get frustrated. At a young age, you just want to enjoy yeah. playing football. No matter what level it is, um, don't be afraid to try things. 
that's probably one thing for me personally I've, I've only just learned I was always afraid though should I really go and do this should I really do that when I should have just tried it because then you learn from your mistakes I'm sure you told me quite a funny story about when you ran off the pitch as a young player because you had a whole team winning it yeah <laughs> <laughs> when I was uh, younger and I was playing out sorry field. to bring that up Craig yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah well Oh, it was a five, five or six something like that. Uh, my first local team, and I'd never, I'd never been brought up playing football, watching football really. Mm-hmm. My dad was always into rugby, and obviously I'm the oldest one, so there's no one before me. Um, yeah, and I just went and I played my first game, and I didn't have a clue what was going on. And I got the ball, and there was just this other team, and they just, they were obviously coming to try and tackle me, but. I didn't know what was going on, so I just left the ball and <laughs> I was straight off. Why are they chasing me? Yeah. So that was my, yeah. Mama, uh, well, what about you, mate, growing up? I think it's just ha- like your attitude and hard work, I think. I think if you keep keep working 100% every day, like we try to every single day, come in and work as hard as we can. And um, that's how you develop. I just think enjoying it is the most important thing as well. You're all still relatively young goalkeepers. I just want to go through the path that you had to take to reach the, the professional game. Uh, F is yours is um, obviously one that involves big clubs, Chelsea, Fulham. Um, how much of an experience was it working under some top class professional goalkeepers? Mark Schwartz, I know you always seem to mention. Yeah, Mark's been obviously a massive role model for me on and off the field. Uh, when he left the club, I had uh, Stecklenburg, who's, mm. uh, like I said before, a very different style of goalkeeper. Mm. And he's, you know, he's been, he's worked hard and he's, a very relaxed guy and um, you know he's got to the World Cup final and um, to, to play alongside these hot guys is unbelievable not bad. you know it's not bad it's not bad <laughs> record to have so you know I've, I've been very privileged and blessed to be working alongside some of the best in the mm-hmm. world um, but like I said you've got to learn from them but you've got to create your own style of goalkeeping as well. Mm-hmm. Craig come up from across from Harrogate 18 months ago a very different path to professional game for you. How did you find playing men's football from a relatively young age? Yeah, I uh, started playing men's football when I was 17 and I just went a completely different route to yeah. obviously others. Um, but it's put me in good stead really because you, you have to adapt quickly, especially at men's football because you a lot more pressure on you. People expect more of you even though you're only young. Um, physicality, getting used to being bumped around. Um, but yeah, I think it's put me in good stead and obviously coming through the non-league is help me when I've come to here because it's a different type of game now. Robbo, what about your route up to the... Obviously I came through the academy and the youth team system so I was playing grassroots till I was like 13, 14, came into the academy here and obviously got my scholarship and then managed to get my pro, uh, obviously my first year pro when I turned 18 here. As an, an academy graduate, how did you find the, the goalkeeper coaching here through the various age groups? Um, yeah, it was good obviously as Neil's come in as I was a pro obviously mm-hmm. it got a lot better for me. Um, it was obviously the coaching was there, and we managed to get it every every now and again. So the coaching's there for us, and obviously there's a lot of the well outfielders now that are coming through the academy that obviously Rico Henry are coming through and showing themselves on the pitch. Evers, when you are a young goalkeeper, can it be frustrating? We, we said again just before we came on air, goalkeepers tend to get shoved in goal, have strikers <laughs> belt a ball at them during training sessions, and that's as far as goalkeeper coaching goes when you're a young young man. How? Disheartening can it be when you're just standing there taking shots all day? At a young age, of course, you know, I mean, that's kind of like what every coach thinks that a goalkeeper wants, mm. but it's probably the worst thing ever, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> it's, uh, it's great now, you know, obviously, because you can, especially when you've got other goalkeepers and you can rotate like yeah, we do yeah. during training. Mm. Uh, but at a young age, you know, when you're pulling one goalkeeper and they've got the whole team shooting at you, it, it can get tiring, frustrating. Mm. Because, uh, you know, as it goes on, the session goes on, you're going to get tired just flinging your body around, uh, <laughs> trying to save every ball. Do you think then, Craig, coaches need to be, there need to be more ways for coaches to learn how to deal with goalkeepers at a young age, at grassroots level, Saturday teams, Sunday teams? Do you think the education's out there for coaches to know what to do? So I think that's part of the problem is that coaches don't know how to coach goalkeepers in particular, specific goalkeeper training. Yeah, it's obviously very, a very specialised position, so it's it's difficult because unless you've really experienced being in goal, then it's, it is difficult to help the, like if they're a young goalkeeper, it's hard to help them like develop mm. and learn like what it takes to be a goalkeeper really. Um, but I think any age they have to just be able to enjoy themselves at the end of the day if they're not enjoying getting a ball pelted at to them mm. then they should obviously 
take that into consideration and mix up a little bit. I ended up going from si- when I was 16, I turned to be a keeper. Yeah. And I just thought, why not? Yeah. I'll go in net and just fling myself around. So I went the opposite <laughs> end of this guy. I went from kicking balls at FIFA mm. to swapping and then going in there. So I had a different sort of route anyway. Well, very briefly before we take a break, how did you find your, your sort of younger age groups have, have been, you know, a standing in goal as a warm up for a game or in training and just being the shot stopper? Obviously, that's what I came in to do. Obviously, mm. I've been in goal since I was like nine, ten. Right. So I've never been outfield. So I've never been the kicky, as I would yeah. say. So I've always, um, always been in goal. We've got lots more to get through in the second half of Sadler's TV. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Sadler's TV. A goalkeeper special for you this afternoon. It's uh, Craig McGillivray, Neil Etheridge and Liam Roberts alongside me. Um, we were talking before the break, lads, just about the grassroots route, but I want to get on to your professional careers as it stands today. F is, from an international point of view, representing the Philippines. Tell us a little bit about how you qualify, first and foremost, to represent the, the Azcoles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, my mum's Filipino and my dad's English. Um, at 18 years old, I... Uh, flew over to, and I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed the atmosphere, the players, um, the coaching staff, and the lifestyle. To mm-hmm. be honest, and for me, uh, at a relatively young age, at eighteen, even though being an adult, um, it was an easy decision for me to make. To mm-hmm. be honest, and I've never looked back, and I've enjoyed every moment and every cap that I've earned. Mm. Was it a bizarre situation when you arrived at Wolves at the start of the season to have? Uh, obtain more international caps than you had come. I know you'd be reminded of it. Have, have, have we passed that yet? Have we got more uh, cover uh, pictures? Yeah, I don't, maybe. Oh, we're coming maybe. up to it. We're coming up to it. <laughs> coming up to it. But no, it's it's obviously strange. I mean, but at the same time, I think playing in front of crowds that are um, lucky to play in front of mm. when I play for the national team, you know, they've always put me in good stead for when I'm playing league football, and it's always. Uh, that step up from academy football on the 21s reserve football where you know you don't get so many people coming to watch and all of a sudden you're stuck in uh, a league game where you've got thousands watching Mm -hmm. Uh, for me it was kind of a reverse role Mm -hmm. where um, I was used to playing in a lot larger crowds Mm -hmm. than I was at league football at any loan club I went to Um, but it's always great playing in front of a crowd and the the fans here at Walsall have been fantastic throughout the season to be honest Uh, and you know they're definitely uh, going to help us for the, the remaining games. Mm. I joke with you about your social media following, but the support is ridiculous <laughs> from the Filipino general public. Mm. Uh, always get behind you, and we're inundated every game <laughs> on social media with comments <laughs> just for Neil Effie. It's uh, it's good, you know. I mean, I think Asia in general is obviously mm. a, it's a m- massive on social media, mm. and the Philippines is no exception. And it's um, it's great for me to to have that life there mm-hmm. and have something completely different here. Um, obviously my previous I've, I've got I've played for the national team since I was 18 years old which is a long time now and um, the following has been strong since day one um, we've had our ups and downs in myself and the team uh, but you know we, we're, we're doing really well this year and um, even though we didn't qualify for the World Cup we uh, will move on and hopefully qualify for the Asian Cup mm-hmm. and with um, Neil's obviously international duty you're seeing more football Craig this year as well I mean it's just part of your development now just playing more games because ultimately you can train all week but it's matches that really make the difference yeah definitely like, matches are the things that you get judged on really mm-hmm. training is one thing but games are another uh, and playing more games this year is definitely I've noticed in myself I'm a lot more confident when I step out on the pitch and when I look back at the Oldham game where I was Really, really nervous <laughs> to now. Like it's just, it's just like another day. Really, when you step out on the pitch, you're there to do a job. And when others is away, I try to do the best I can. I remember you getting off the pitch and saying the first ten minutes was a complete blur of the old. Oh, I think you put one over the community stand. Yeah. <laughs> I took a away. touch and went to try and clip it to Martin. And sent it miles over the stand. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Robert, what's it like working with these two lads? How much can you learn from from Neil and, of course, Neil Cutler as well? Obviously, the whole goalkeeping mm-hmm. uh, union be brilliant. Obviously, you know. Interesting, you use the word union. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got to use it. Anyway. <laughs> now, nah, um, obviously, it's brilliant. Obviously, we push every push one another mm-hmm. every day. Always give one hundred and ten percent every training session. We're the first ones on the pitch, last ones off, all the time. So as I'm pushing Craig, Craig's pushing Neil. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Dan below me is pushing me. So always competition between us, but. We're always stepping on, always progressing. Whenever we do any video edits with the players and I, and I speak to members of the squad, they always say that the goalkeepers are the hardest working. It, is there a written rule that says you have to be the first ones in and, <laughs> and the last ones out, or is that just the way goalkeeper training is? Um, 
No, not necessarily. But I think the union here has been great. You know, even since I started here at the start of the season, you know, cuts. Uh, likes his goalkeepers to work hard and mm. all three of us and everyone else and Dan as well uh, we like to work hard you know we were in the gym after training mm -hmm. uh, we're working hard before uh, but we have a good time and that's the main thing you know even though there is competition between us mm -hmm. we have a great time and all yeah. of us are friends on and off the field so uh, it's not a bad thing spending time with each other. Mm -hmm. What are Neil Cutler's sessions like? He's got a pretty big reputation for developing goalkeepers you like obviously the subject of those What's it like working with Neil Cutler? Yeah, he's got like, a massive amount of experience. Obviously, he's played the game. He's now in the coaching role. Um, but he likes to like separate each aspect of goalkeeping between each day so you can work specifically on each thing and have a good detailed session on it. Like One day we'll do a crossing, then the next day we'll do a power session, for example. Then we'll start off with distribution sometimes. So it's, it's mixing it between what you'd actually do in a game and going into finer details on the training pitch. And I suppose that helps you, Rob, even junior loan spells, to be able to train here day in, day out still, remain part of the, the union <laughs> and work with Neil Cutler, I suppose, is beneficial for your development as well. Oh, exactly. It's massive. Like I said, we were trying to work on my game management, obviously. Without the games, I can't do that. So, obviously, training every day with these guys and Neil's been brilliant for me. One aspect of training that the whole world seems to have seen <laughs> is the viral video. Uh, just to put the supporters who are watching this in the picture. So you guys are going through a training session. Feet, come on, work him, work him. Good, yes, ball, ball, ball. Good, back down, good. Yes, go. This is toward the end of your training. I think it was right at the end. It was the last bit of training, yeah. So I have a little amble over at the training ground, just on my phone, record yeah. 30 seconds of what you're doing. Post it up, not thinking that it's going to go further than Wensbury. Mm. In the end, it gets seen worldwide. <laughs> Were you guys surprised at the reaction of just how many people saw that clip? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, for all of us, you know, I mean, it, it's a great experience to, to be virally seen, mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it was it was a great session. It was at the end. Uh, cuts kind of just threw it on mm. and you recorded it and all of a sudden people were messaging me and saying have you seen it have you seen it um, you said I was in it <laughs> I was in it I was there <laughs> but it was uh, no it was great you know to, to really just kind of see it and mm. to analyse it as well I mean I think everyone kind of just saw the hard working great mm. saves but for us we kind of take a different part of it and we have to analyse uh, as much as you as you can, mm -hmm. and you guys see those videos. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about that, weren't we? About the slow motion videos that sometimes yeah. you get provided with. How much of a difference can those make when you're looking at the finer details of goalkeeping on, on on video clips? Yeah, well, when you're there, obviously taking a, a shot or a volley or whatever, you think you're doing one thing, and then when you get a camera that's actually watching you and they slow it right down, mm -hmm. like the slightest little details make a massive difference. For example, when I first came in, my hand shapes were here. Mm -hmm and they've been brought back in here and it makes a massive difference like the split seconds for the ball to you are vital so if your hands are in the right place that can be the difference between actually catching it or keeping it out of the net mm -hmm. how much abuse did you get for during that video when you missed one of the kicks up against the barrier <laughs> 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 well, well I don't know well I just tried to make it as difficult for others as I could but I tried to score and every time he kept managing to claw it back out <laughs> it's not as, not as bad as being in the net and ducking out the way <laughs> that's <laughs> true yeah <laughs> Uh, Robert, he's talking last season, you've done quite a lot of video work as well. Have you found it helps just to look back over, I suppose from a different perspective as well, mm. whilst you're standing in goal, you can't see the bigger picture? Exactly, it's like, it's like looking from a coach's eyes, like, mm. you know, you get a different perspective on how you're training and the different things you can work, like, work on and develop on. Mm. So I think it's good. Obviously, with the matches as well, we get the analysis mm. and like debriefs. So we get to look at how we've played and what we can change and what we can improve. Mm. Uh, on the season so far then, 28 games in, uh, all the statos tell me and the media bods tell me that 13 points gets us to where sixth place finished last season. Mm -hmm. How excited are you with the remainder of the season? How much belief's in the camp at the moment? Um, if I'm honest, I think the the, the the ground and the foundation of the the team has been fantastic, mm -hmm. and we've taken every game as it comes. You know, we haven't got ahead of ourselves. We've got young heads, old heads in the changing room. Um, and it won't change. Mm. It won't change from now to the end of the season that we take every single game, um, whoever we're playing, with respect. And we know that we know within ourselves that if we, we can perform uh, to the level that we've been performing mm. uh, throughout this season, we know that we'll be in a fighting chance for um, at least playoffs. But we would like to obviously get um, automatic promotion. Mm -hmm. Craig Millwall on Saturday, another tough test down here at 
at home. Looking forward to it. Yeah, well, it's a, another another game. Hopefully, I'll be playing in. Uh, I haven't actually seen them play because I was injured last time we played them, but I've heard that they're very direct. They're doing well. I think they're sixth in the league. Um, so, yeah, it'll be another tough test and hopefully get three points. Did it surprise you with just how we've started? And well, I say started, we're past January now <laughs> into February. But, you know, continued it. I think, you know, the bigger fish in League One would have looked at the likes of Warsaw and Burton and, and Gillingham and expected us to fall away. Did it surprise you at the start of the season? Did you know that this could be a promotion chasing season? We had a great start to the season, there's mm. no doubt about it. I think it was six, six games and we'd won five of them at mm. least. And um, I don't think people give us enough credit. Yeah. I think, to be honest, you know, look, I look at um, the papers or something like that and they're just like, oh, we'll also win again. Well, we've done it throughout oh, the season. Yeah. And people are kind of expecting us to slip up and we haven't this year. And when we have slipped up, all due credit to everyone on the field and everyone at the club that we've bounced back extremely quickly. And um, for the rest of the season, you know, as I said, we'll be up there. Do you afford you yourself to have a little glance at the league table after every result? Um, I think you can be honest. I think you do, you have to, yeah, yeah. but I think you know Jim O'Connor's probably the main one in the dressing room. He's like, doesn't matter. We need to keep going, yeah. and it's fantastic for all of us. Like I said, he's been experienced. He's an experienced pro, like Chambo is, like Tails is, and to be honest, it's um, it's great learning curve for mm. all the players. Mm. Well, Neil, Craig, Robbo, thanks ever so much for joining us on Saddlers TV. That's all we've got time for for today's edition. Thanks for now.